Hello to everyone. This is UC, the head teacher of PTEA Puny. Today and in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about repeat sentence, which is one of the most important tasks in PTE. Just like previous videos, this video will be divided into two parts. In the first part, we will dive deep into some basic information of repeat sentence. The exam interface of RS will be like this on the exam day. You will hear a sentence and you need to repeat what you've heard. Like all other questions with audios in PTE, you will hear the audio once only. Most of the sentences are between 9 to 14 words, but you may encounter some questions that are longer than 14 words. You can see there are two boxes on the interface. The first one shows the status and the progress of the audio. The second one at the bottom shows the status of the recording. When the progress of the audio reaches the end, the microphone will be turned on and the recording begins. If you answer before the recording starts, your answer will not be recorded. There is no beep sound before the recording starts. This means you won't hear any sound to remind you of the start of the recording. And the tricky thing is that sometimes the recording does not start immediately when the sound of the audio stops, because sometimes there is around one second of blank space in the end of the audio. So if you speak immediately after the speaker finishes his or her sentence, it's very likely that you will have a portion of your answer not recorded, and this will cause you to lose marks. There are two ways to go about this. One is that after the end of the audio, pay attention to the recording progress bar. Only start speaking when you see the recording starts. And a better and more recommended way is to take one to two seconds to prepare your answer before speaking. I will tell you more about this method soon. Same as all other speaking questions, the recording stops automatically if you are silent for three seconds so you should also practice the time management. Do not spend too much time thinking before answering. Limit it to one to two seconds. There are 10 to 12 RS items in the exam. As we have just talked about, there is no preparation time designed for RS, but you may use the one second of the blank audio and the three seconds before the microphone gets turned off to prepare. The maximum answering time is 15 seconds for repeat sentence, but you certainly won't need that much time. RS is one of the most important tasks in PTE because it is a key contributor to both speaking and listening scores. As you can see from this table, it contributes 30% to PTE speaking and 23% to PTE listening. Your scores will look really bad if you're not well prepared for repeat sentence. Now, let's learn about the marking criteria of repeat sentence. It is marked in three dimensions, content, fluency, and pronunciation. There are three points in content, five points in fluency, and another five points in pronunciation. In total, 13 points. From the points allocation, we should know that fluency and pronunciation worth much more than content. So we have to do well in fluency and pronunciation. Let's take a look at how content is scored. As described in the score guide from Pearson, the requirement of a perfect score of three is to repeat all words in the correct sequence, which is a quite difficult task. And in order to get two points, you need to repeat at least 50% of the words in the correct sequence. This is a lot easier than three points. To get one point is to repeat less than 50% of the content. You will get zero point if you repeat almost nothing from the audio. We can see that actually PTE is quite lenient in giving content points for repeat sentence, because if you repeat only half of the sentence, you can still get two points out of three in content. You're only missing one point. If you perform well in fluency and pronunciation, you will still get a really good score overall. Again, Fluency and pronunciation is the key to success in RS. Moreover, 
it's important to note that the content has to be repeated in the correct sequence. For example, if the sentence is, I like you very much, and your answer is, very much I like you, then you only get half of the words correct, thus you will only get two out of three points in content. Grammar is not important. You won't be penalized if your answer has grammar errors, so don't worry about grammar when you speak. For fluency and pronunciation, the full mark is five points each. To get a high score in fluency, you should not hesitate, mumble, or self-correct. A lot of students make this mistake when they're speaking and thinking of the words they heard at the same time. For example, you may hear a long sentence and recording halfway, your memory of the later half of the sentence becomes vague, and you start, um, mm, it is. This will get you heavily penalized in fluency. The correct way to do this is to organize your answer before you speak and, if necessary, give up the later half of the sentence to ensure your answer is fluent. We will talk more about this later when I teach you the exam strategies. To get a high score in pronunciation, you need to speak clearly with appropriate stress and intonation. And note, you don't need to copy the intonation of the speaker. As long as your stress and intonation is natural, you are good to go. Don't worry about accent also. Pearson's algorithm is able to understand different accents, be it British, American, or Indian, etc. Just make sure that you're pronouncing clearly and correctly. Wrong pronunciation, however, will cause you to lose marks. Now, let's take a look at the content requirements for different target scores. For a student whose target score is 79 or above, try to repeat at least 80% of the content for short sentences, and for longer sentences which are more difficult, try to repeat at least 50% of the content. You don't have to repeat all the words for any of the sentences. If you perform well in fluency and pronunciation, Repeating 80% and 50% can still get you a score of 90 in PTE speaking. For students whose target score is 65 or above, repeating 50% of the sentence is sufficient. For students whose target score is 50 or below, try to repeat at least two to four content words for each sentence in a clear and fluent manner. By content words, I mean words with meaning like nouns, verbs, adjectives, or adverbs. Prepositions like to, on, of, for are not counted. Okay, guys, after knowing the basic information of repeat sentence, let's get to part two, learning the exam strategies. Let's try out a repeat sentence question first. You will hear a sentence later and you will hear it once only. Try to repeat what you've heard. Okay, be prepared. I'm going to play the audio. They can tutor other students who need help for the preparation of the course and the test. How did it go? How much content have you repeated? Are you able to repeat clearly and fluently? Don't worry. Most students find repeat sentence really difficult at first. It is hard to repeat all the words and speak clearly and fluently at the same time. Let's learn how to solve this dilemma with the method 258. So what is method 258? It represents three different methods of repeating. To describe them briefly, method 2 means repeating two to four words, mainly content words. Method 5 is to repeat 50% of the sentence and method 8 is to repeat 80% of the sentence. I will explain these in much more detail soon, but let me explain the general steps of answering first. In the first step, you should listen to the sentence very carefully. Try to listen and comprehend. While listening, based on your understanding of the sentence, quickly decide among the two, five, eight methods which method you want to use. 
Step two, after the audio ends, take one to two seconds to recall what you've heard and organize your answer in mind according to the method you've chosen. Remember, we've mentioned earlier that we should not speak immediately when the sound of the audio stops because the recording may not begin yet. Instead of paying attention to the recording status bar, we should make better use of this time to recall and organize our answer. This is the key step to ensure our fluency later. Step three is to tell your answer clearly and fluently. Tell only the answer you organized in the previous step. No more add-ons. Even if you think you suddenly remember one or two words, do not add more words, because when you add or try to add another word, you will most likely hesitate or stumble and lower your fluency and pronunciation scores. Okay, now let me explain in detail when and how to use method two. When you hear a sentence, you find it very difficult or you get too nervous and you can't understand most of the content, you should quickly decide to use method two. When using method two, you should listen and focus on picking up two to four words that you can understand. Don't panic. Ignore everything else that you can't understand. Even when the sentence is hard, do not get carried away by the difficult words that you don't know. There will certainly be a few easy words that you can understand. Pick two to four words. Make sure you pick at least two content words. What I mean is that do not pick all words like of, a, and, to, the, and words like these. Content words are words with meaning like nouns, verbs, adjectives, or adverbs. After picking two to four words, when the audio is over, spend one to two seconds to recall and repeat the two to four words in your mind. An ad is important at the end to make it sound like a sentence so the tone is natural. When you're ready, answer confidently, clearly, and fluently. For example, the original sentence is this. They can tutor other students who need help for the preparation of the course and the test. If you find this sentence too difficult, maybe because it's too long or the speaker said it too fast, whatever the reason, you should only focus on picking up a few words that you understand. In this sentence, there are quite a few words that are definitely easy to you. You must be able to understand if you listen closely. For example, if you heard other students at the beginning and test or the test at the end, you can compose your answer to be, other students test is important, or other students the test is important. Or if you only heard they can tutor, then your answer can be, they can tutor is important. The grammar of the answer is obviously wrong, but as we mentioned earlier, Grammar is not important in repeat sentence. The key here is to say the answer confidently and fluently. Make it sound like a natural and complete sentence. I shall repeat the answer again. Pay attention to my pronunciation and fluency. Other students' test is important. Do you see how natural I sound like? In this way, even when we don't understand the sentence at all, we have helped ourselves secure the maximum number of points possible. We will definitely lose points in content, but at least we are speaking clearly and fluently, so we don't lose too many points in pronunciation and fluency. We have also experimented this method too on the most recent Pearson scored mock test D, which is the two hour version. In this experiment, we have used the method two on all repeat sentence questions picking two to three words from the audio and adding is important at the end. And we answered perfectly in other speaking tasks like read aloud, describe image, retell lecture, and answer short questions. And this is the score report we got. We got 68 in speaking. So we are safe to say here, if your target score in speaking is 50 or below, you can use method two on all repeat sentence questions. But if you're targeting 60 or above, I will not recommend you to go to the exam when you can only repeat two to four words for each RS question. Because even though we get 68 in this experiment, 
we were answering all other speaking tasks perfectly, which is certainly not an easy task if you're not an expert in speaking. You are still recommended to use method 2 in a few really difficult tasks, but you should train yourself to be able to use method 5 or 8 in most cases. Only by doing this can you stand a greater chance in getting 60 or above in speaking. Next, let's take a look at method 5. When a sentence is too long and you can only understand or remember half of the content, you should then quickly decide to use method 5. In method 5, when you listen to the sentence, pay attention to half of the content only. It may be the first half of the sentence or the second half of the sentence, or it may also be the first few words plus the last few words. There is no fixed rule for choosing which half of the sentence. It all depends on which part is easy for you to remember. And again, when the audio stops, do not rush to answer. Take one to two seconds to recall and organize your answer. And when you're ready, repeat that half of the sentence clearly and fluently. For example, when listening to the original sentence, I find that the sentence is too long for me to remember. At this stage, I have quickly decided that I should use method 5. And since I can understand the first half of the sentence, I give up listening to the later half of the sentence right away and start recalling in my mind, they can tutor other students who need help. I vaguely remember the sound prepa. Since the memory is vague, I choose to give up that word and stop at who need help. So I've organized my answer in mind, which is they can tutor other students who need help. When I'm ready, I say this half of the sentence clearly and fluently. Pay attention to my pronunciation and fluency. They can tutor other students who need help. If you can better remember the first few words and the last few words, and you don't remember the middle part, your answer can be, they can tutor course and the test. This is a very good answer too. Just remember to speak clearly and fluently. We have also done experiment on this method 5 on the official mock test D to our version. In this experiment, we have used the method 5 on all repeat sentence questions, repeating only half of the sentence for each question. And we answered perfectly in other speaking tasks like read aloud, describe image, retell lecture, and answer short questions. And this is the score report we got. We got 87 in speaking. So, you're safe to use method 5 on all RS questions if your target score is between 65 to 75. If you're targeting 79 or above, I will still encourage you to use method 8 on some easy sentences. Because even though we get 87 in this experiment, we get it only because we answered perfectly in all other speaking tasks. Okay. Let's learn about method eight. The sentence length varies for different RS questions. There are some really long RS questions with around 14 words or even more, but there are also some short or middle length questions which have around 10 words. So in a case where you encounter a short sentence and you can understand most of the content, you're safe to use method eight. If you have chosen to use method 8, while listening, pay attention to understand the meaning of the whole sentence. Don't worry about not being able to memorize all words, because you don't need to. Just focus on understanding the meaning of the sentence. In this way, you will actually remember more content than trying to memorize each and every word. Without understanding, trying to memorize a group of unrelated words is not an easy task. When the audio is over, spend one to two seconds to organize your answer before speaking. It's very common and natural that even though you understand everything the speaker said, when you are asked to repeat it immediately, you may still miss a few words. It happens to all of us, even with our mother tongue. You may be able to remember those few words if you're given more time to think 
or if you have purposely trained for short-term memory. But the good news is that you don't need to train yourself for short-term memory. PTE is a language test, testing your language skill, not a memory test. And as our name of this method suggests, method 8 is to repeat 80% of the sentence, not 100%. It's not necessary to aim for 100% anyway. So, when you're organizing your answer in mind, do not hesitate to skip the words you don't remember clearly. And when you're ready, repeat your answer clearly and fluently. For example, let's have a look at this question, which is much shorter than our previous question. The library is open on campus and online during summer semester. When I hear it, I can understand almost everything. The sentence length is appropriate, so I decide to use method 8. After listening to the audio, I start to recall and organize my answer. I know that there are a few words between is open and online. But in that one to two seconds of recalling and preparing the answer, it's hard for me to concentrate and think of the missing words, so I decide to speak without it. See, this is the beauty and importance of taking the one to two seconds organizing your answer in mind before speaking. If I only realize that I don't remember these few words when I'm already answering, it's very easy for me to hesitate and mumble at is open then my fluency and pronunciation scores are compromised. Okay, when I'm ready, I should speak confidently and fluently. The library is open online during summer semester. Notice my pronunciation was clear and my voice was in normal pace, not too fast or slow, and I answered with natural stress and intonation, no hesitation at all. In this experiment of the official mock test D to our version, we used the method 8 on all RS tasks and answered perfectly in all other speaking tasks, and we got 90 in speaking. You don't need to care about the reading, listening, and writing scores here. We have completed other non-speaking tasks too in this experiment, but they won't affect the speaking score. This further proves that answering 80% of the content is sufficient to get a full mark in speaking. Don't go after 100%. It's not necessary. It's more important to ensure a good performance in fluency and pronunciation. Okay, now we know what method 258 is and how to use it. Here are the key takeaways. First, you should decide on which method to use when you're listening based on the difficulty of the sentence. Second, this is very important and often neglected by new students. You must recall and organize your answer before speaking. This is the key to ensure a high score in fluency. And when you're ready, remember to speak clearly and fluently without any hesitation. If you're targeting 79 or above, you're recommended to use method 8 on short sentences and method 5 on long sentences. But if you see a question that's really difficult and you're only able to use method 2, don't push yourself to use the method 5 in the exam. Because always remember that you cannot give up on pronunciation or fluency. If out of 10 repeat sentence questions, you only used method 2 on one or two questions and the rest you're using mostly method 8 and 5, it's still possible for you to get 79 or above. If you're targeting 65 or above, you're recommended to use method 5 on all sentences. Of course, try to use method 8 if it's in your written capability. And if you're targeting 50 or below, it's okay for you to use method 2 on all sentences in the exam. But always try to improve and aim for method 5 or 8 in practice. Now, Let's move on to the second strategy, chunking. Chunking means breaking down a sentence into several meaningful chunks or segments. Do not memorize a sentence by individual words. It's much easier to memorize something that has meaning. So when you're listening, 
try to break down the sentence and understand by meaningful chunks. For example, in the following sentence, they can tutor other students who need help for the preparation of the course and the test. If I jumble the words into a random order, so there is no meaning between these words, and you can give it a try to see how much content you can remember without understanding. Okay, be prepared. I'm going to read. Preparation the of other can tutor students who they need the and the help for course test. How did it go? How much do you remember? See? If you are to memorize word by word without understanding, then you have to memorize 17 words at a time. It is quite difficult, even for a native speaker. And if you break the sentence into four meaningful chunks, they can tutor other students, the first chunk, who need help, the second chunk, for the preparation, the third one, of the course and the test, the last chunk. We will then only have to remember four meaningful chunks. It's much less than 17, isn't it? You will need basic grammatical knowledge to use this strategy, such as basic sentence components like subjects, verbs, objects, and clauses. When you're proficient with this strategy, you will be able to divide the sentence into several chunks automatically when listening and understand the sentence by chunks. With method 258, we have learned that if you're targeting 65, we can use method 5 on all sentences. But what if method 5 is still too difficult for me? I cannot remember much content. Then we have learned chunking to understand a sentence by meaningful chunks or segments. So, in order to be able to repeat more content, the key is to improve your listening skills and make sure that you can understand the sentences. But what if my understanding is weak? How can I improve my listening skills? So, here it comes the secret strategy. Repeat sentence drill with APUNI MP3. This is not only going to be helpful for your PTE exam, you can also use it as a daily practice to improve your overall English listening skills. First, let me introduce the APUNI MP3 feature on the PTE APUNI app, which is available in iOS and Android app stores. This feature is available on the homepage of the app under Study Tools. With this feature, you can listen to thousands of PTE speaking and listening questions anywhere, anytime. You can prepare PTE just like listening songs on your phone. Here are three steps in this repeat sentence drill with APUNI MP3. I will explain each step in much more detail. The first step is to listen and repeat. The second step is to learn the sentence and understand its meaning. The third step is to repeat step one and step two until you can fully understand the sentence and repeat 80% of the content. Let's take a closer look at how to do step one, listen and repeat. First, there is some preparation work that has to be done. You should open the PTA Puny app, enter the MP3 page, and click on the settings icon at the top right corner. Set the playback interval to 5 or 10 seconds, and choose the audio replay to be 5 times at the bottom left corner. Then we can begin practicing. You should listen to the audio carefully, without looking at the script on the screen. When the audio stops playing during the playback interval, try to repeat the sentence as much as you can. It's best to repeat by speaking out your answer, just like in the exam. But if it is not convenient for you to speak, for example, in a library, you can also repeat in mind. Note, it's okay to stammer while repeating. The aim of this step is to train your listening skills and repeat as much content as possible. Allow the audio to replay for five times, and you should practice the listen and repeat process for five times. Try your best to repeat more content each time. And it's important that you should not look at the script at all for all these five times. Just listen and repeat. After practicing the listen and repeat process for five times, in step two, we are going to learn and understand. Now you can look at the script on your screen. 
check if there are any unfamiliar words in this sentence. If there is, check them up in the dictionary. You can check the dictionary directly in APUNI's app. Learn the meaning and pronunciation of these words. After that, analyze the sentence structure to recognize its subjects, verbs, or clauses, and so on. This will help you understand the meaning of the sentence. Also, try to break this sentence into meaningful chunks, which can help you understand and remember better when you hear it again. Lastly, repeat step 1 and step 2 until you can fully understand the sentence and you can repeat at least 80% of the content. Remember in step 1, you are not allowed to look at the script. Only look at the script in step 2. The repeat sentence drill with APUNI MP3 requires continuous effort in practicing. It is more like the process of building a house brick by brick. You won't see any sudden dramatic improvement in your listening skills, but if you look over a longer period, say two weeks, you should notice that the sentences are becoming easier and easier to you. APUNI MP3 is a convenient and a very efficient study tool. You are suggested to practice whenever you can, on the bus, train, when you cook, or before you sleep, etc. Just practice as much as you can. As for the workload, try to practice at least 20 sentences a day. I have two questions that I often get asked. Let's deal with them here. The first one, should I take notes while listening, such as writing down the initial letters to help me remember better? I personally won't recommend it, especially for students who are aiming for higher scores. As we have mentioned earlier, the key to remember more content is to understand the sentence. Taking notes will distract you from listening and understanding the sentence, but you may try if you're using method two or if you're a fast writer. Check for yourself to see if taking notes help you remember more and speak fluently at the same time. The second question is that, is it necessary to mimic the speaker's intonation? Not necessary at all. Speaking clearly and fluently with natural stress and intonation is good enough. For example, if the speaker says, the school library is open on Monday, he stressed on the word school, and my answer is, the school library is open on Monday. I stressed on the word library. I won't be penalized at all. I will still get full marks even though I have placed stress on a different word. To sum up, always remember that pronunciation and fluency are much more important than content. Never compromise on fluency for more content. Practice a lot and be familiar with the method 258. Train yourself to be able to answer fluently for all kinds of sentences. Always take one to two seconds to recall and organize your answer before answering. This is the key step to guarantee your fluency. Understand and memorize the sentence by meaningful chunks. Never memorize without understanding. It is very inefficient to memorize a group of meaningless words. Lastly, how to improve your listening and understanding skills? Well, you should practice the repeat sentence drill with APUNI MP3 whenever you can. Try to practice at least 20 sentences a day, and you will be amazed in two weeks. Okay guys, that's all for today's lesson on repeat sentence. You are recommended to visit www.apuni.com to learn PTE the smart way with more online courses, practices, and mock tests. And if you want to receive quality content like this, please subscribe to our channel and turn the notification on to be notified of new videos. This is UC, the head teacher here at APUNI. See you next time.